Hello everybody and welcome back to the Crafty Yellow Camper and today I want to share a card with you using um, one of the bundles that is available in the catalogue um, and when I say bundle that means you can buy the stamp set and the matching dies with a 10% discount. So this is using the Seaside Seashells, I had to get my teeth in correctly to say that, bundle which is the Friends Are Like Seashells um, stamp set and the dies. Oh, actually, I've told you that the wrong way around. It's the Friends Are Like Seashells bundle and it's the Friends Are Like Seashells stamp set and the Seaside Seashells bundle. Uh, stamp, dies, sorry. And there is also an embossing folder which coordinates with that suite and that's what I've used here. So what I've done is I've cut a standard C6 English base, which is half of an A4 sheet cut across the middle and then scored or folded in half again. And that makes a standard C6 card, which is 14.8 centimetres deep and 10 and a half centimetres wide. So if we go back to open that out, that is 14.8 centimetres here and 21 long okay which is our standard a4 sheet if you're watching from anywhere abroad you might have to um, convert that okay so what i've done is i've used a piece of basic white so this is our thinner white card stock we do have basic white thick as well which is better for card bases but this is perfect for card fronts and i have used the embossing folder just to emboss the card front and that's it that's all I've done. So this is a really simple, easy card. Um, and then what we're going to, quick one to make in a hurry, but that's quite effective. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add some colour to this basic white card front using some blending brushes and some ink. So I'm just going to pop that card base to one side and I'm going to bring in my blending brushes. Now, these are the Stamping Up blending brushes. They come in a pack of three. They're really reasonably priced. You'll find them in the accessories in the annual catalogue. They are really velvety soft. Now you can see there, mine's got a bit of staining on it, but it's been used quite a lot. Um, and that any staining to the brush doesn't affect its use. Um, and so, as long as you've washed them in between use, that colour won't transfer to another ink pad. Okay, now at the moment we only sell three in this size. They come, as I said, a pack of three, all the same size. So I've just grabbed a couple of my older brushes, which are actually makeup brushes, um, just for the smaller areas that we need to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add some ink to these shells and then we'll go back and do some of the foliage as well. So I'm going to use um, some Sahara Sand which is a really pale colour because on this big Nautilus shell I don't want it to be too much colour. We're sticking to fairly pale colours for this and I'm just inking up my brush and you can see there's some on there and we're just going to start. I normally wouldn't tell you to start in the middle, I'd normally tell you to start off the page but because this is sorry I've just realised you're out, I'm out of shot, because this is um, embossed um, then obviously we can't start off the page, we'd have the ink in the wrong, wrong place. So I'm just going to very gently start in the middle and I'm using small circular motions because I'm trying really hard not to go over the edge of this shell if I can avoid it. And all we're doing is adding a little colour. So I'm just going to put a little bit more ink and I'm going to go back in the middle and work my way out. So small circular motions so you don't go over the edge of the shell okay now I've used the biggest brush for this one because it's the biggest shell okay but you could use a smaller brush obviously or whatever you've got you could equally use a sponge dauber or some sponge okay right so that's just added us that little bit of color to that nautilus shell and I can just see there's a little bit here that could do with a bit more color so again, small circular motions, not to go over the edge too much. Okay, and we've started with the biggest one first. Okay, so that looks a little bit messy at the minute, but once I've finished, you'll hopefully get the the plat, get the um, idea. And once we've added some more colour, that won't look quite so odd. I'm just going back out to get those edges. 
Okay, that will do for now. Now don't mix up your brushes um, with your ink pads in case you need to go back and add a little bit. But if you've only got one or two daubers or brushes, obviously you can clean them in between. Just rinse them in some um, soapy water. Make sure that they're rinsed out properly and dried because otherwise it will make the ink go a different colour. Okay, so next we're going to bring in one of our new ink colours. This is Pale Papaya. Looks really orange on there, but it's not as orange as you might think. And we are going to ink up a slightly smaller brush for this because we're going to have a go at this shell here. So I'm sorry if I keep coming out of shot. I could probably do with moving you down a little bit closer, really. But I don't want to pull my um, camera mount down. Let me just see if I can just move you down a little bit. A little bit more. I don't know if it's going to go there we go just a little bit lower down now okay so I'm again using small circular motions to cover that shell oh yeah I went in too heavy there so you uh, do as I do say not as I do okay that's fine Okay, and then we are going to bring in some fresh freesia. I know most shells you pick up on the beach are white, but I've often wondered what colour they would be under the water. Okay, so I'm going to bring in a little bit of fresh freesia. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm just going to take a little bit of that colour off, which is what I should have done with the pale papaya, but just take a little bit of that colour off. And I'm going to just add that little touch of purpley colour. That's a really nice colour. For those of you that remember the last in colours that have just retired, we had Purple Posy, but it was quite disappointing in that um, they couldn't get the colour quality um, right, so it was withdrawn um, and never replaced. So we've just added that little bit of purple in there, and then I've got this tiny little brush. So I'm going to leave this clamshell and this clamshell white for now. And I might go back in and add a little bit of the Sahara sand. I'm not sure yet. And um, we're bringing in another um, new in colour. And this is Soft Succulent. Which is a really nice, almost sort of tealy green. And again, that looks really dark on that ink pad, doesn't it? So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a brush off there. And we're going to then add some colour gently to this greenery and I'm having to use sort of strokes rather than small circles but we just want to touch the edges just to get that little bit of seaweed greenery in there okay and I'm just very lightly doing it Hopefully you're starting to see it appear. Okay, we just want to highlight that detail a little bit. And to get that really pale, I'm just um, taking off some of the colour on my piece of scrap paper. This isn't the neatest job I've ever done. It's really hard when I can't get my head right over it. Okay, and then we've got a little bit down here as well. And we're just going to ink that up as well. Okay. don't need very much ink at all on your brush just to add that little bit of colour okay right and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in another one of our bigger um, blending brushes which is this one here I'm going to close up these ink pads because I know that I will end up leaning on it Okay, 
let's just pop those all out of the way. And our base card is Army Blue. So I'm just going to grab, excuse me if you can hear the noise behind me, I've just realised I've reversed into my other stool. I'm just going to add a little bit of blue sort of around the edges of the card just to give it that sort of under the sea look. So I'm just getting some blue on my brush. See that there, okay. And then this time we are going to start off the card and we're just going to go over in gentle circular motion. I probably should have taken my bangles off because you're hearing a lot of jangling. <laughs> so I apologise for that. Okay, I'm going to go over there just to add some colour to the edges. And that will sort of blend in the green as well that we've just used, the soft succulent. That will sort of blend that in to give that under the sea um, effect. Okay. Oh, that's really annoying, isn't it? I'm sorry about that. Okay, and then we can just very gently go over these shells in the middle just to add a little bit of colour to it and that will blend in our other shells. So there we go and then that is just simply going to be added to the front of our card like that. Okay so I'm just going to add some liquid glue to the back of that. I really am going to have to remember to get another one out. This is video number four that I filmed while saying that. <laughs> I'm really rubbish at remembering. Right, put it away. That's the trouble. I put it away and then I go away and do something else. And then I come back and I forget. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to line this up with the front of the card. Okay. All right, there we go. So there's our card with our inked seashells on. And I've just noticed a little bit that's still a bit white there, so we'll go back over and do that again. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to shut that balmy blue up for now. Okay, and then what I've done, um, most of my cards I don't actually put a greeting on until I've decided who I wanted to send it to. Um, but I just wanted to show you how you can make a greeting really easily. And this is using the Banners Picker Punch. Um, there are three sizes on there and if memory serves me correctly it's two inches an inch and a half and an inch now I've used one of the greetings out of the friends I like seashells stamp set and that says you are unique and completely amazing and I have um, sorry I'm just realized there's ink on them I'm just gonna wipe that off so I don't get it on my cardstock I have used the inch and a half in order to get that greeting in so what you do is you cut your cardstock to the width of the punch so in this case the inch and a half I think let me just check yeah inch and a half and then you feed it into the punch and it will punch this nice neat banner edging for you and then the next size up on there is two inches so I've done that on the blue and I want the balmy blue and I want to mount the white on the blue but for me that is a little bit too much round the edge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my greeting to the blue. And you can line it up with the points and just move it along. And I only want that little tiny fraction of an edge around there. So what I'm going to do now is bring my trimmer in but the fact that I have lined up this V here um, will act as a guide and I know that that is right rather than trying to trim it down anymore so what I'm going to do is just slide that in my trimmer 
and I'm just going to take the tiniest fraction off. I've just realised you can't see what I'm doing. Let me move those ink pads so I can come forward. Now, a little tip for you. If you're going to be taking a tiny sliver off and you don't want it to rip, if you lift up the trimmer guide slightly and put it down on your card, then you can go up and down. And you can see I've just trimmed that little sliver off without it getting caught and ripping it. Okay, and then we need to do the same thing on this side. Now, obviously, I can't, well, I can just flip it over because I can tell where it's got to go. But um, you obviously would have to be really careful to cut it like this. Actually, I will do it like this and then you can see. So this line here is where the blade is going to cut. So you can see that that is going to cut along there. So we need to move it slightly back. Make sure it's level at the top. It's better to take off not enough and go back and take another sliver than it is to take off too much. Okay, but I think that's about right. Okay, and then we just need to trim this end down here. So again, we can pop that in. We can use this track as our guide to where it's going to cut. And trim that off there. There we go, and that's much better. Okay. Right. Okay, and then we can just bring our card back in and I'm not actually going to attach it right now um, But I just wanted to show you how you can use our punch to get that perfectly lined up um, Greeting and that will probably go on there With a little bit of twine or something like that. Okay, so that's that's one card and then I'm going to show you how to use the dies um, now this is what that image that we've just inked, the embossing, embossed image, looks like when it's die cut. So it will cut out all the gaps in between the weed um, and bits for you. It's just one bit there that I haven't popped out. Okay, so you can see those shells are now standalone shells, just joined by a little bit of greenery. So you could, another piece there I haven't got out. You can see there are little bits here that I'm popping out with my thumb. So you could use the stamps that come in the stamp set. There are stamps for these. You could use those to add some colour. You could ink it, as we've done before. Um, and you could just use that on your card front, like that, which looks really nice. Okay, but what we're going to do is we're going to make a base. So for this, I just need a piece of scrap paper. And this is my piece of paper that I've been using to um, take off a little bit of ink. You can see there I've stamped off various different things on there. Okay, so we are going to make the card uh, landscape this time. Our last card was portrait, so we're going to go for landscape. So I'm going to just tear randomly a piece off this paper wide enough that it is going to fit over our card okay I'm going to line up my card base on the using the grid paper and then I'm going to tape down again lining it up just try and get it not that it really needs to be straight it's wiggly now you can tape this down I'm just going to tip you a little bit so you can see there you go. You can take this down or you can just hold it down. I'm just going to hold it down and I'm going to bring back in our balmy blue. Give that a good ink up. And then what we want to do is ink along the line. Now you need to do this quite slowly with our nice circles because otherwise what will happen is you will ruck the paper up and the ink will go underneath and we don't want it to do that okay okay so I'm going to ink along that line like that and we're just putting some ink up the top here okay so when I take that piece of paper off, we have an A horizon, okay? And then we're gonna use that piece of paper again 
to make a piece of beach. But this time I need my Sahara sand. And I may even need to um, get a darker um, brown than this, but we'll see how we go. So that's our sky. So I'm moving it across a little bit this time because we don't want a replica of that. We want to move that across a little bit. So I'm taking it over to there. Okay. And I'm going to ink up my brush with a good amount of ink. No, actually, I don't want that there. I want to turn it upside down. Sorry, I nearly told you wrong there. Okay, so crafting on the hoof. Okay, I've turned that piece of paper upside down. So this is the piece we inked first. So we did that piece like that. And we're now working on the bottom. Okay, and again, I'm going to go in with some nice gentle circles to catch the edge. And this is going to take quite a lot more ink, I think, than the balmy blue. As I said, this Sahara sand is a nice, um, nice light colour. If you find that you do ruck up the paper, if you work in small circles from the whole piece of paper across um, your paper, uh, piece of cardstock that we're inking onto then you're less likely can you see I'm pushing it away so it's less likely to ruck this edge up okay just need a little bit more over here okay so we've basically got our sky and we've got our beach and we just need to fill in that little piece of ocean in the middle so we're going back to our um Seaside, uh, balmy blue again, but this time we're going to be really light with it. Okay, so I'm going to cover up the beach because we don't. Oh no, we did it that way, didn't we? I'm just going to mask that off there a little bit like that, and we just don't want as much intensity of colour for the sea here. And I might add a little bit of green in as well. Oh. So. Just add in a little bit in here. I'm just going to take away the mask and just fill in this edge here. Now I could have put a sun in here by putting a circle and inking around that. But this isn't a sunset colour, is it? Okay. And it's fine to leave a little bit of the white showing because you would have the crests on the waves. So that's called the torn paper technique. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we are going to cut this time our shells apart. So I'm just going to grab my snips. Now, you can do this just from the embossed section. I just wanted to show you what it looked like um, die cut. So what you can do is just cut round the pieces of the shells that are joined to these bits of foliage I'm just trimming these off and we're not going to use all the shells so you could actually make more than one card from this embossed and die cut section and we just need to trim this little horn sorry I just realised I'm out of shot again just need to trim this little horn of um, greenery off there and just make sure that this is neatly trimmed. So that's one of our shells. Okay, and then we're going to use one of the other smaller ones as well. So I think I'm going to go for this one here. So we just need to cut that out. can hear 1940s music coming from downstairs. I'm upstairs in my craft room. I don't know if you guys can hear that on the video, but we went to a, um, it was called Midi in the War Years, and Midi is the Mid Suffolk Light Railway. And um, they have their event each year where everyone dresses up and you can go on steam trains. 
and we bought a wind-up gramophone. So we have a camper van, so we thought it would be quite nice to have the wind-up gramophone to be able to play when we're away in our van. But my husband has discovered that the needles are one use only. We wondered why it came with millions of um, needles, literally. And that's why. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit more of that Sahara Sand ink. And you can probably barely see that on there. But that's just to take away the whiteness of the cardstock. Because that, that, if we were to put this white shell on here, that would be quite stark. And you might like that. I'm just going to add a little bit of this Sahara Sand just to give us a little bit of colour. There we go. So that's that one, and then we're just going to do the same on this small one. Okay. Try not to ink my fingers. Okay, so that's that one there. And then I think we might have this little clamshell here, so I'm just going to cut that out of there. Go. So it's quite easy to trim. I'm trying to do it around the camera, but it is quite easy to trim because the um, the embossing folder basically does the work for you. Uh, this has obviously slipped a little bit when I was um, running it through the embossing folder. So I'm just taking the edge off there of that little clamshell. And then again, we're just going to give that a little bit of colour, just a very gentle colour, just to take the starkness of that white away. OK, and that one can sit there like that. So that's left me with this left. So if I show you, if I detach the Nautilus shell from the greenery, Okay, so I'm just trimming off all of those bits of um, fronds and seaweed. And again, I'm just trimming it up here because it's slipped a little bit. Okay. Okay, so that's the Nautilus shell removed from there. And then we've got another little clam shell here. So if I trim off these sections there and trim that up there we can detach this piece of seaweed here and then we can go around the top and trim off this piece so from that one embossed piece we've got our card that we've made here and then we've also got these extra bits so I'm just trimming off these fronds that we've got here just getting rid of the little tiny pieces out of the way okay and it is a little bit fiddly you have to do a little bit of trimming but it's as I said the embossing folder basically puts the lines there for you so all I'm actually throwing away from that one panel is this a few little bits there so they're going in the bin. So we've got some um, other bits of, oh, another little piece there. So we're left with these pieces. So I just wanted to show you, and that's why I haven't stuck these on to the card yet. So I'm just going to remove those off. So we could do the same technique for our base that we did before. Oh, just realised there's another little bit on there that needs to come off. is starting to fade a little bit so I have to have my desk lamp on um, for filming and um, sometimes things don't always show up so we've got our lovely big nautilus shell there we've got this other little clam that could go over there somewhere and then we've got all this weed so we could have a little piece of seaweed tucked under there and then we've got these frondy bits here which if we wanted to we could have sort of sat there 
with that little shell over the top like that. So you can see there are enough pieces, and we've still got these bits left here as well. There are enough pieces from that one embossed and die cut panel to make at least two cards. And obviously all I would do is ink these shells again. As I said before, there is a stamp that coordinates with these in the stamp set, um, which I have used, but I quite like inking them as well. Okay, so let's put our card together and then you can see the two options. So I'm just gonna bring back in our, our um, Balmy Blue card base and grab some glue. Hopefully there's enough left in this bottle just to get us through to the end of this demonstration. Okay, so I'm going to stick that inked panel onto the front of the card. Okay, and the card base is slightly bigger, so we get that little peep of the balmy blue around the edge. Hopefully that's level. It's really difficult to tell when I'm filming. Okay, yeah, that looks okay. And then what I'm going to do, because these are, are very slightly shaped by the embossing folder, I'm going to bring in some dimensionals. So on the big shell... I'm going to pop two dimensionals. And this middle size shell can have one because I'm going to layer that up. And then this little dinky one is going to have a couple of mini dimensionals. Oh, empty packet, that's not very useful, is it? Here we go, here's the little mini ones. Okay, so I'm just going to pop a couple of the little mini ones on there. I can get my hand under. Okay, so let's pop those to one side. So here's our big shell. Just digging my thumb into the middle of the um, dimensionals just to make it easier to lift the top off. So I think we're gonna have, how did we have it? Doesn't really matter. I think we'll have this, this shell sort of standing up a bit more there. And then we're gonna come in with this, this one here. And that is gonna lay on there like that. <clears throat> and then we're just going to take the back ends off the little mini dimensionals and then that little shell is going to be propped up there. So another really simple card and we again we could bring in that one of the greetings and that could sit there like that. Um, or you could stamp a greeting onto your um, inked panel. <clears throat> I would suggest you do that before you stick the panel on in case you get it wrong and have to turn it over and ink the other side. And then again, as I said before, we could change the card up completely by putting our Nautilus shell and some weed. Obviously, I haven't inked these. I'll ink these up and use these for another card. Um, we'll get away with our little bits of weed. Like that. There we go. So hopefully I've shown you that you can use that embossing folder and the dies that go with it for quite a lot of different things. I haven't actually even used the stamp set in both of these cards. Um, so you can see how that set is really versatile and with the 10% discount, it is 50 pounds and 25 pence, which is a lot of money, but add the embossing folder in there and you've got yourself a suite of projects which will make all sorts of cards. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that and I've um, shown you a few hints and tips. And um, if there are any of the items that you've seen me use today that you'd like to purchase, please drop me a line. You can contact me through my YouTube page or you can contact me on my Facebook page, which is the Crafty Yellow Camper, or send me an email at craftyyellowcamper at outlook.com. Okay, that's all for me for today. And I will be back soon um, with some more cards for you to share. See you all soon. Thanks for watching and happy stamping.